it's always exciting to come here because it's almost a miracle the way Hong Kong's developed. But this time, naturally, one's mind was full of other thoughts. Uh, what is going to happen will shape Hong Kong's whole future. We negotiated the joint declaration of the basic law for a long time, very carefully, and we hope it will be generally and broadly upheld. There have been one or two things that worry us, but in the main, I think that joint declaration basic law will be carried out because it's both in the interests of Hong Kong and in the interests of mainland China to do so and to be seen to be honoring the agreement they signed. What are the two main worries for you? I think the main worries are that although the economic freedom is now well established, that the, 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 the rights which people of Hong Kong have come to know as their own and as their rights might be constrained. We must clearly must have freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of association. These are fundamental freedoms, freedom of religious worship. These are fundamental freedoms and they must continue. The joint declaration on the future of Hong Kong which we have just signed on behalf of our two governments is a landmark in the life of the territory. As one of the co-signers of the joint declaration, are you disappointed right now being in Hong Kong and seeing that the original legislature will be sworn in right after the handover and that it plans to roll back civil liberties? Yes, I am. It would have been a magnanimous gesture to say, all right, we'll continue with the Legislative Council. It's important we get a good start. So let that just continue until a new one is elected. And I had hoped right up to the end that somehow the present government in Beijing would be magnanimous about it. You know, we have a saying, magnanimity is not seldom the truest wisdom. But it doesn't look as if it's going to come about. I hope, therefore, that the Provisional Council will only last for one year, as they say, and that during that time, obviously, preparations must soon be made for new Legislative Council, and I hope for one which is elected by a universal franchise. Do you think it was a bad move on the uh, Labour government's part to have Tony Blair sit out of the swearing-in, but yet the decision was made to send a British official to attend the swearing-in of the Provisional Legislature? What kind of signal do you think that's sending out? Well, Mr. Blair is coming over. Uh, I am here. I think the provisional legislature is being sworn in at about 1.30 in the morning. Uh, uh, swearing in is not the most exciting thing, but I think that he and I perhaps feel that the provisional legislature is not what there should be. It should be a continuation of the Legislative Council and that therefore we can just indicate that we think it's not quite right in the way we are. I think that it is unwise of China to have done what she did, very unwise. It would have been far better if she said, look, uh, we have had second thoughts and as a gesture of goodwill, we're going to let the Legislative Council continue until we come to a new election, uh, which will be arranged, and instead of going to a Provisional Council of nominated people, we'll let it continue. She's not done so, and that is a weakness. But these people are not used to debating all about politics and law in the same way as we are. They're not used to having to justify themselves to the people because they don't allow any alternative party. That eventually will change. You cannot stop the wheels of history turning. They're turning already because China has had to give economic liberty in order to get the prosperity and a higher quality of life. Looking ahead, Britain has always said that it's going to fulfill its moral obligations, but yet when you have this kind of situation where Britain cannot even stand up, it seems, on principle, uh, how can Hong Kong people be assured that they will, their rights, their interests will be protected after 97 when this is happening before the handover. I must say I take great exception when you say Britain cannot stand up on principle. We are a country almost born on the principle of liberty, on the principle of law, 
and which developed the oldest and most successful democracy in the world, other than the United States, which was born much later. So we live by principle. We live by the principle of liberty. We live by the principle of justice. And we hope to extend it to other people. I do not think everything will be changed. Go through that joint declaration. Look at the freedoms it guarantees. Use that joint declaration to raise these points with your chief executive. Raise the points with the provisional legislature. I do disapprove of a provisional legislature. It should be an elected legislative body. Raise them one by one, again and again and again, each day, because that's what they have to live up to, because that is a treaty, a treaty between China and the people here, uh, which we signed, registered with the United Nations, Use the powers you have to see that it's lived up to. But what makes you think that China will actually live up to its word? Do I think that because of things like Tiananmen Square, uh, that China can keep her agreement? Yes, the answer is yes. Because China made the agreement in great detail. She knows that she'll be judged in the eyes of the world by whether she keeps that agreement. And I think the fact that there were four cameras in Tiananmen Square when that terrible decision was made to fire meant that the whole world saw what communism was like. Uh, and any tyranny, whether it's the fascism, the Nazism, the communism, any tyranny does not observe the rights of the people. But it must have been a great lesson to the rulers of China that she was universally condemned by the world. And I do not believe that it would happen again. If the Tiananmen crackdown had occurred in 1979 rather than 1989, would Hong Kong's future be different? Would there, be, would there have been a joint declaration? Well, the joint declaration of quiet right was signed before that. Uh, and then came Tiananmen Square. I think what that showed, well, my instinctive reaction was, communists don't change. They have no respect for human life. Communism is not respect for each and every human being. It's a system in which people have to knuckle under to governments. And they will not allow any rival party politics, any rival party. That was my instinctive reaction. It was one of absolute horror. If there is one thing that was helped, all the photographers were in Tiananmen Square, and the press was there, and it was fully reported to the world, so the world knew. So we hope that it will never, never happen again. But do you think Britain would have negotiated much harder to provide protections for Hong Kong? We could not have negotiated any harder than we did. It took nearly two years. Um, some of the most skilled people were on that negotiation. And in the end, we had to agree it. And it's a good agreement. You know, if you actually read it, it's got all of the fundamental freedoms, all of the freedoms in the joint declaration. If that joint declaration is honored, then it's very good for Hong Kong, and it will be good for China. Because, you know, the history of the world is that countries may somehow from their governments obtain economic liberty, but the history is that that is always followed and eventually by personal and political liberty. It's a question of time. You can't be half free. When you fell down in front of the Great Hall of People after a meeting with Deng Xiaoping, many people saw that as an omen. So what, what were you thinking when that happened, or what did you think when that happened? Uh, I was actually looking up at the cameras at the bottom, because they were looking. And I had very high heels on. And those steps are rather more narrow than the ones I was used to having, and the heel caught on the edge of the step, and so my ankle went. And that's all it was, just bad luck. Do you think that Britain did a good job with Hong Kong in the last years of colonial rule, or do you think that many say that it's going to be a blotch in history again, because Democrat, you have less democratic 
uh, democracy after the well, handle I'd than before. Say so. I think Britain has done a good job for Hong Kong and a good job for the world. Now, why do I say that? Let me tell you what Britain has demonstrated that Chinese people are immensely talented. Chinese people here have no natural resources. Chinese people in China are immensely talented. They have natural resources. Now, why is it that Chinese people, the same Chinese people in Hong Kong, have done so brilliantly well in creating prosperity, where Chinese people in China have not? The average income here per head, $23,000. In mainland China, coming up to perhaps $2,000. And the difference is the philosophy of government under which people live. We are a free society in Britain. We breathe the air of liberty. We founded the most, perhaps the best rule of law the world has ever known. And we're the oldest democracy. So the talents of people were able to ex express themselves within that framework, liberty, law, democracy. They're just beginning to express themselves in China with economic liberty. They've not yet got a rule of law. No, they're getting a rule of contract law because, in fact, the moment you begin to ha have um, very successful companies and trade, you've got to have uh, a commercial law. But the moment the people in China have the full liberty, a full rule of law, a much fuller democracy, China will be the most prosperous country in the world. We, meaning Hong Kong and East Asia, in such a buoyant economic and political mood, generally, is in large measure not because of Hong Kong or Singapore or ASEAN, but because the world economy has done well, Japan has been exporting its, relocating its industries, and China has been prospering. Do you think that Hong Kong will be like another Singapore, where you have economic prosperity, but yet you have restraints well, on civil liberties? Singapore is unique, and it has a unique, uh, a new, unique person in Harry Lee Kuan Yew, and the person who created a state always has a very special affection from the people. So it is uh, rather different from, from Hong Kong. Hong Kong will have its own way. Hong Kong, I think, will eventually have the full freedoms, even beyond the joint declaration and the basic law. It will come to the full freedoms, which we regard as the full freedoms. And I think gradually so will China. That is the way I think it will go. Isn't that wishful thinking, though, because the handover hasn't even occurred yet, but yet you already have indications that uh, liberties will be rolled back. I is it really a sad day for thinking. Hong Kong? I think it's applying the history, which necessarily is what happened in the past, to the prophecy for the future. And you look and see how many, many more nations there are that have come up to full democracy with freedom and the rule of law than there were at the time of the last war more and more are coming up to full liberties. Um, <clears throat> there are tyrannies. Fascism and communism are not democratic. But you've seen the collapse of communism in the Soviet Union. First, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and then the collapse of communism was the greatest and most hopeful event of my lifetime. In China, it is the collapse of the economic dictatorship that's gone, as you're getting the economic liberty. And P the, um, Mr. Deng Xiaoping, who uh, traveled the world, realized you never get prosperity unless you had economic liberty. I think he was a wise enough man to know that once you start to have liberty, you can't stop at economic liberty. It'll go away. 
how does the former British Prime Minister feel about the United Kingdom losing its biggest and most important colony? I shall be very sad indeed. I shall wish to goodness that our forebears had not signed a lease, but had had the, the territory in freehold in perpetuity, in which case Hong Kong would have been a free, independent nation long before now. She could be still if China would let her.